let's talk about random news in a country. No, sorry. News, right. <laughs> current news in a random country. Random countries go. in the news. There. Number one. The no, US. not random. Okay. Let me, let's establish that we are recording this on Sunday, February 11th, 2018. And it will be coming out on Wednesday, February 14th, 2018. Current news in a random country. What's the random country today, Tendo? Spin that wheel. <laughs> It's Barbados! Barbados! Hey! For those of you that don't know, Barbados is a tiny, itty-bitty little island on the far east side of the Caribbean, or the Caribbean, or the Caribbeans, mm-hmm. as I like to call them. The Caribbeans? Um, and some stuff, some stuff happens there besides just people going there and ha- having a jolly good vacay. Mm. Like what, Tendo? Mind elaborating? Like, yeah, sure. Um, one of the great things that they do is um they they get mad at the, the, the security guards there in Barbados. That's fun. That's a that's a fun thing that uh tourists like to do. Uh I'm just Yikes. kidding. Actually, uh there's some some bad violence going on in the schools in Barbados. Ooh, and so they put that's some no good. Se- some security guards in there. And then there was still violence and they were like security guards why didn't you do anything that's why you're there and they're like well it's not in our job description it's it's not within what what our job is and we're like well what is that and they're like well it's yeah. to protect the property of the school and they're like no you Are should you... be protecting the people in the school too even if it's each other that they're fighting so yeah that's ridiculous okay so how did that result did they get like fired all of them or did they did they redo these rules? Because I feel like that's completely ridiculous. Um, no, this is this is a very very recent thing. Um, okay. They're what they're what they're thinking of doing is um, mm-hmm. just replacing the the security guards. But, but I don't think it's it sounds the like people. it's an issue with. It sounds yeah, it like. Sounds like- the system's uh, broken. Well, one guy said, "Yeah, he said the security officers were badly informed." Um, okay. You know, to believe it, but then again, here's the thing: this isn't every single security guard. You know, there, mm-hmm. there's violence, but there's only a few. So this has happened probably two or three times, which you know might not represent represent all the security guards. But if it's happened at all, they need to be you know reinformed what they're doing. Yeah, um, is what they're saying. Yeah. So hopefully they do that, and they do their jobs, and no more kids have to get hurt at school because that's yeah, because we don't want that. School should be a safe place, if nothing else. Right. I mean, the only thing you should be worried about is, you know, prejudice and, you know, poor education systems and, you know, maybe harassment and stuff. And Yeah. Yeah, nothing at all. Not physical violence. Yeah, hopefully hopefully not stabbing. Definitely not stabbing. Stabbing is not good. No. If you want to look into it, go for it. Link's in the show notes description to the article you found. Well, I found something that was significantly less real and like intense okay. and it's the fact that this guy named uh, i'm gonna completely butcher this um i can pronounce his last name but his first name is w-e-s-u and i'm thinking it's like wesu or wesu or was wasau wesu i'm gonna just okay. say wesu um and his last name is wallace wesu wallace and basically he was on the voice uk and Indeed. yeah and he was he's pretty good apparently but He's originally from Zimbabwe and moved to Barbados at the age of 10. And then he's currently 36 year old and he's been in the the UK. So I guess this is only kind of a Barbados story, but this guy's from Barbados. And back in 2002 or 2003, this show only lasts be- between 2001 and 2003. So it's between there. There's a British uh, show called Pop Idol, which is like American Idol, but bad and British. Um, actually, no, American Idol is pretty bad too, but it doesn't matter. So he was on that, but now he's on, he was on The Voice UK and apparently right. he's pretty good. Indeed. I, I heard yeah. about that too. Good for him. I, I hope he, hope he has more, more success. Yeah. Um, there's also some other, there's another great guy from Barbados. Uh, mm-hmm. his name is, uh, oh okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Kamar Safri, I want to say, or Safri, uh, Safri, I believe. Um, Safri. Yeah, Kamar Safri. Uh, so he's the president of the Barbados Vagrants and Homeless Society. Um, 
So basically what they do is they, you know, they help those who are less fortunate in <clears throat> Barbados, Neato. which is great. And so that's cool. And he has like a great story and whatever. Um, but anyway, uh, you could find that out yourself. He um, was named Barbados's Commonwealth Point of Light, which is like a great like honor. It's like the... It's like a Nobel Peace Prize of like being a, a good person kind of thing. Um, I don't, I, I don't understand much more than that, considering the the source I found what wasn't great. But the fact that there is something called the Vagrants and Homeless Society, you know, Barba of Barbados, uh, is pretty neat. And that Barbados has its own little Nobel Peace Prize type deal. Right. Thanks, Barbados. Also, can we just acknowledge Barbados has an awesome, awesome flag? Yeah, I was actually going to mention that. I really, really like their flag. Okay, so for those of you that don't know, Barbados' flag is... Okay, so it's essentially... It's blue, and there's a yellow stripe going down the middle, cutting mm -hmm. it into th kind of like thirds, almost. Yeah, and down the middle, this, vertically, not horizontally. There's this 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 uh, this black, spiky trident yeah, in the and middle. Yeah, it's beautiful it's simplistic and it's just yeah Mwah. i think it's a genuinely great flag i think that every time we do this segment we should talk about their flag because i really like flags and it's something that i find interesting yeah it's flag pretty design. interesting i'd i'd have it tattooed across my chest oh really same we yeah. should hey hey once we get to four million dollars on patreon both of us will get a barbados flag tattoo mm -hmm. cool and we'll post pictures of it yeah weekly weekly updates <laughs> Segment two, we're going to talk about screen names. Ah, oh, or like wonderful usernames. screen name. I know all about screen names. Back in the day, I used to be in the heavy s screen names business. What's a screen name? Okay, for those who don't know, well, one, I'm going to be surprised because you're on the internet. Basically, a screen name is just a username. Someone, something you go by on the internet or on, actually, no, basically just the internet or I'm in a video alias. game or something <clears throat> that a isn't your username. actual name. So, for example, No Mitch is my screen name, and your screen name is Tendo or Tendo Or Boy. if you're really cool, you can make your real name your screen name. Yes. <laughs> Just put an underscore between them. Yeah. Noah oh. underscore last name. Boom. Perfect. The reason that I wanted to talk about this is because my friend, he asked me to give advice on doing a new screen name because he had one since he was like nine and he hates it. So, so he's like, I'm done with it. Help me with a new one. And, I'm, and it's much harder for me to think of screen names than I thought of. The one that I have now, like, well, so what I want to talk about is the history of our screen names. Like, how did we get our screen names? So I'm going to start and then you can talk about yours. So basically my screen name, Nomich, N-O-M-I-C-H. Uh, my middle name is Michael. So the M-I-C-H is from that. And the first two letters, no, and O is for my first name, Noah. So it's Noah Michael, and that created my thing. This was oh. not created by me. It was created by my father when he created a Club Penguin account for me when I was six. Oh, so nice. my Club Penguin username, which is now deleted because Disney sucks, and they deleted <laughs> it because I hadn't used it, but they didn't send me an email or anything saying, hey, it's going to be deleted. Um, Nomich6 was my username on Club Penguin, and ever since then, I had my usernames no Mitch, and then however old I was when I got it. So when I was 11, I got Minecraft, so it was no Mitch 11. But now it's just no Mitch on anything. And if I can't get no Mitch, then I get no Mitch underscore, and it's good. So that, that's oh. how I that came to be. That's pretty nice. Um, It's funny because I've, I've spent the last year, a lot of people have, I, I've asked people, you know, what they, what they think of mine because what with my – you internet identity constantly changing or whatever i've 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 considered changing it a lot of times and I, i'm still considering it but part of it's because of what, what it came to be i believe it was goodness how many years was it go uh five years ago i want to say 2013 um, i was I, I it was at lunch it was lunchtime and it just kind of came to me uh but obviously it's five years ago so i was very young and I was just <laughs> like, well, let's see, what am I doing on my channel? And at that time, because it was, it was for my YouTube channel, basically. I hadn't 
used it for anything else. Before that, mm -hmm. all of my accounts, I believe, had been Blue Link 44 because I loved The Legend of Zelda and I was obsessed with the color blue. Um, Got it. But then when I was creating a YouTube channel, I was excited to create my own unique in alias. And I was like, well, mm -hmm. I... I'm probably going to post a lot of Lego animations because that's what I did, you know. Um, and they most, all my ideas basically centered around different Nintendo franchises. Uh, ah. There was a Mario one that I did. There was a, I had a whole Legend of Zelda series uh, and stuff like that. So I was like, well, I'll, I'll center it around Nintendo. Um, so I was like, how can I turn Nintendo into my name? I remember mean, it was just, oh, it was, it's Tendo Boy. But I was like, no, that doesn't have like a kind Nintendo of Nintendo feel? It didn't feel professional enough. Um, yeah. So I added the Super. Cause I, <laughs> super Tendo Boy sounded like it was so long and complicated. I was just like, there's no way people can't take you seriously. You know, and little the, did I the realize, whole thing with making a brand, the longer and more complicated the name, the better. You don't want a short, succinct name for your company absolutely not you want well, something convoluted and hard to remember and um uh, it's 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 difficult because then the, the problems that have arisen the good things okay let me just talk about pros pros are n their name is never taken ever yeah Tendo, super tendo boy is always available there's been one or two times tendo boy has been taken mm -hmm. but very few i can think of one or two instances the problems are I don't like having to spell it out to people or explaining it to people. So mm -hmm. I preferred Tendo Boy, which is why whenever I played games, it would be Tendo Boy. But whenever I was making stuff, it would be Super Tendo Boy. But I, it was still longer. I liked having a short name. Um, mm -hmm. So then it's kind of Tendo. But now it is so close to Nintendo, it's impossible to say it to anyone without them automatically Associating making, it with... Yeah, making yeah. Nintendo like connection and mm -hmm. categorizing me as that which i guess is whatever i can live with it but i don't know it, it's also exciting to think about coming up with something new and yeah in my opinion i think two or three syllables um easy pronoun to pronounce make it sound like an actual word that doesn't exist uh kind of yeah. thing that, that those are my favorite kind of alien no mitch tendo right. Both of which work. I think that we have really good screen names, frankly. Yeah, I, I mean, I certainly like yours, but... I, yeah. yeah I'm I think right mine is great, and uh, it's really simple. And when I... Do you know what I'm going to do? When I have children someday, and I'm naming them, I'm going to name them so they have a really, really good portmanteau of the their first and second names so they can make really good screen names. Oh, I, w I would name them... <laughs> Uh, off of like the what I would do is I would get into like RuneScape, and the first four usernames I would see, I would name my kids those <laughs> minus whatever numbers are in the name. That's awful. That's so bad. It's like um, xx underscore slayer sixty four xx. Right. <laughs> that will be your name. You will be known as xx slayer sixty four. It's gonna be on their birth certificate. Well, I mean. <laughs> I know people named off of, like, video game characters, but... Well, yeah, there's, like, Lara Croft or something, or Link. I know someone named Logan who was named after the comic book character, Wolverine. Right, 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 yeah. So, I mean, I wouldn't want to name my child Wolverine, but Logan's a pretty cool name. So, I mean, right. I'm not saying that's... That's fine, but if you're going to go to RuneScape and go whatever the first four names, you're going to get pretty unlucky. <laughs> I mean, what what do you want me to go on, Roblox? I mean, <laughs> RuneScape just sounds like the obvious choice to me. What about World of Warcraft? Why. They probably oh. have better usernames. World of Warcraft? Well, yeah, yeah that's the thing. I want to pick something where I'm going in there, and these are, like, the best of the best. These are, like, veterans, like... The, the normies have cleared out. They've been done with this game for, like, years or months, you know? I'm not going to jump into whatever is it. I'm going to date this episode right away, but Fortnite or oh, yeah. Unknown Battlegrounds. Or, Those yeah. are great games, and people are probably going to play them for years to come. But right yeah. now, it's, it's going to be filled with everyone, you know? I want to go yeah. somewhere where it's like, you're probably in your 30s. Um, if not, you're an extremely dedicated, like... 20 year old you know yeah and i think those people have the best usernames <laughs> yeah 
yeah, oh my they're, gosh. they're best, especially if they started when they were 11. Yes, that that's why, because they've been there the whole time, and they're stuck with that terrible username, and that would be what my kid is like. <laughs> Your kid is going to be stuck with a horrible username, but it wasn't yet, it wasn't his choice when he was 11. It was yours, and you, you had the power to change it, but nope, it's... <laughs> I just like the way that you said it, and that's what my kid's going to be like. Well, I mean, it's a different person's giving you a name, but at the same time, weren't we different people when we came up with our screen names? I didn't I mean, even come up with my own screen name. My father did. Exactly. Exactly. Are you hearing what I am saying? <laughs> yeah, I get it. <laughs> but you're saying but, that your your father gave you a good name to do that. Not oh, like yeah, me, frankly. I'm my, maliciously... I think... I think Noah Michael is a really, really good name, and it works really well together. So, what's your middle name? My middle if name. If you don't, if you don't mind telling the podcast. No, no, I'm not. I'm not gonna say my middle name. Could you tell me my you, the middle name, and I'll just take it out? Yeah, sure. My middle name. Actually. Yeah. Wait, that's your father's name, isn't it? Indeed. That does not sound good. What? I don't. I I know your name, but does not sound great yeah no offense well, no, no no i agree too i i, I like it because the initials sound like you're regurgitating something yeah it sounds kind of like yeah yeah i i think my name noah michael <laughs> sounds really good and i'm fortunate so yeah screen names they're interesting and that's they're where we great. got ours actually maybe my next okay i'm tempted just because of this conversation to develop a new screen name not not for the podcast you can call me whatever you want I mean, Nintendo I I'm not saying I'm getting rid of my old things but like if I, I was to create a new account and something different or I was making mm-hmm. a new, new YouTube channel just seriously just randomly generate letters and not do them in that order because then they're gonna you're gonna get like four consonants in a row and you won't be able to pronounce it but like you, you know. basically just shoot out like five letters. And then you rearrange them to make your name. Well, when we're when we're coming up the words for the sixty second improv story, the nonsense words, I choose a starting letter, then do a vowel, and then do a consonant, another one, then do another vowel, and then it usually makes a word that seems kind of here. Let's do it now. Um, okay. M, O, T, E, D, E, S, L, E, Motezel. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to do, uh, let's see, let's see, what's the one I wouldn't think of? J. 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 O. T. A. Z. I. P. A. N. Jotazapam. That's Jotazapan. That doesn't sound awful. Dochazapam. Jo- and then you could also, and then once that, you can, you can like switch up one of the words. Rotazapan. Ro- dude, dude, dude. Yeah, j- Jotaz, Jotaz sounds good. Oh, wait, change the, change the, yeah, Jotaz. Tazzy um, sounds good. I changed um, the P to an F, so now it's um, Jotazafan. See, this works, and they make really good nonsense words. I always, see, after I always come up with one, though, I always Google it just to make sure it's not an actual thing. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're talking about. I remember yeah. when, whenever I made, uh, like, when I was coming up with my last, with my screen name or whatever, uh, when I was brainstorming ones, I like every time I thought of something, I would quickly like Google search it and I'd scour the internet for anything that used that combination of letters. And a lot of the times I'd get foreign like articles and websites, <laughs> um, which was funny, but usually um, no one else with the same name. Yeah. Because usually you could say a name and you'll be like, that's probably taken. Yeah. Usually, if it's if it's a conjugation of two words, um, well, surprisingly, words... Nomich is not very. I I wasn't able to get Nomich on Twitter or Reddit, but um, just Nomich. So I had to do Nomich underscore on both of those. But um, it's not super common. And when you Google Nomich, it always corrects to um, Norwich. <laughs> so that's no fun. But. <laughs> I long for the day when I can type in no Mitch and then my stuff will come up without <laughs> correcting the <gasps> wait. <gasps> what? Let me try it. Let me try it. Hey, it's just coming up with my like podcast and stuff. Hey, yeah. I searched it. And my it. YouTube channel. This is awesome. 
also um hashtag no mitch is actually north michigan so <laughs> so that's fun <laughs> yeah i was gonna say no there's also apparently a name like a last name it's a surname hmm. uh what did your no mitch ancestors do for a living what no mitch records will you find what is None. the average no mitch lifespan Oh, I want to know that one. I I should probably know that one. What's the average lifespan of a, of a, of a gnomage? It might be a little shorter here soon. Oh snap! Oh gosh. <laughs> Segment three. We're gonna break something, and by break something, I mean like break. We're gonna break a baby. Ooh, that's not yeah. Good. Y'all ready okay, the reason he says that is because babies. the segment, the thing that I have in the show notes is baby story break, which is because it's kind of loosely based off of a podcast that I listen to called Story Break, where they break a story, which is the act of planning an entire story out, like act one, act two, act three, act four, act five. It's an act, five act structure, at least. Um, breaking so babies. They, yeah, they don't like write anything, but they generate ideas and have a plan for a plot and stuff. So I'll leave that in the show notes. Uh, story break it's a very entertaining podcast and they do a bunch of things but the reason that i'm calling it baby story break is because it's like that but like smaller and it's just for one, one small little thing we've done a tv show and we've done a band um i will leave those in the show notes description and the only thing that we have to go off of is a font title from defont.com it is the best place to get names for anything i yes. i would say You'd get a new screen name from there, but oh my gosh, you're right. So generic and perfect that you're sure to to run into sixty other people with that yeah. glorious name. Then just add just add a few numbers at the end, and you should be good. Um, <laughs> don't do that, please. Anyway, so we're gonna go to Defont right now, and we don't actually know what we're. Usually, we have like a plan, like we're gonna make a band today, we're gonna make a TV show. Right now, we don't know. We're just gonna look at the names and see what we feel like it would be. Like, what kind of feel we're getting. Also, I just got one called Good Vibes. I'm seeing this. Uh, Gentleman in the Shadow. Oh, Gentleman my gosh. Gentleman in the Shadow. That that sounds like a really good one. That's um, a horror film. Gentleman in the Shadows. Or maybe not. Um, a Long Reach sounds pretty good. Also sounds like a horror film. I'm going to see if I can get something that, that really stands out. Maybe something. This one is called um, A Palu. Which I don't even know what that I means. I saw that one. That one yeah. looked really good. Mon um, Cherry. Don't know what that means. I have one just called Olivia. Lacoste. Only the Strong. <gasps> Ooh. This one's called Sweet Hipster. I saw that. Strawberry Blossom. Lily Mac. See, and the thing is, like, what they look like is also influencing when I'm imagining them being. Yeah. Which is why I'm so drawn to the one Lacoste. Which, if you keep refreshing and you find that one, it's it's really good. This one is called Star Stella, Lovely Day. Okay, let's just let's okay. let's let's find something that we can really work off of. The red light. <gasps> the red light. I feel like we can definitely work with that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Do, 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 does that make? I'm thinking like a sci-fi film, kind of like Blade Runner. Have you seen Blade Runner? Uh, no, I haven't. But I know what you're saying. I get it. Like a future dystopian sci-fi film, and there's this red light that basically controls everything. Like Sauron, but like technology-driven. When you said red light, you know what I thought? Okay, hear me out. Uh, is there's these people, um, they're whatever, some dystopian stupid thing about yeah, got robots mm-hmm. have taken over or something yep. like that. Which you is know? done way too often. Yeah, totally. But it, we're overdone. focused on this group of people that are trying to like I don't know get out of a city or something. So they're they're like they're digging underground. They're digging underground. They have to like like the Berlin Wall. They have to dig under it. You know yeah, they're getting it. somewhere. That mm-hmm. way they can avoid the robots. And then yep. it collapses in, and they think Ooh. they're alone, but they're not because they <gasps> see this red light at the end of the tunnel, and they have to I don't know. It's a thriller. They have to survive yeah, in there because there's there's kill a robot in these like these tunnels or whatever that they didn't necessarily dig they came into like the shaft you know and so it's like uh you know alien yeah where it's an alien and they're surviving on this very small ship with this barely seeable uh you know creature it's a similar thing except we're underground um it's very dark and yeah they uh they have limited light or whatever 
Yeah, um, they're like catacombs that were made by the resistance. Right, and I don't know if collapsing. this is an extremely obscure reference, but there was a uh, Five Nights at Freddy's fan game called um, the the Joy of Creation. Do you ever hear of it? No. I feel okay. The, probably not. Anyway, there's this really creepy feel to it um, because the the animatronics have these lights that come out of the front of their head that shoot straight forward. The whole rest of the game is dark, so you just get this terrible like. Uh, goosebumps like or this shiver yeah. up your spine when you're walking down a hallway and then all of a sudden you see light because the light means you're dead and then Ooh. you hear it coming for you i don't know that, that, that was my that's idea. a really really good premise i really like how it's kind of a so they they've made these tunnels to get out to escape from whatever they are in, or maybe like, something like that yeah i, I don't yeah, know yeah but and they think that the government doesn't know, but of course the government knows because the government is objectively bad always. Um, <laughs> and they know everything. But, like, I do like how it's kind of this alien type thing, but it's like a group of people um, right. who are – and there's just a red light. Yes. That's all you ever see of it. Um, except yes. Except for maybe later when it you actually – Someone like is looking around. And they shine a flashlight in the corner, and then you see the side of it, and then it turns towards them. And it's a robot, mm. so its movements are really like oh. uncanny. Yeah, and real jarring, and yeah, and the sounds that they make. Oh, oh gosh, the sounds are the worst. The it, sound, ah, oh, the sound design feet. for this film would so be goes, so good, and has to be done perfectly. Oh gosh, it'd be it'd be terrifying. Um, but yeah, and obviously, well, in cliche, order to set, yeah. It is cliche, but, but it also sounds inventive and new. Like the premise it's ta- sounds fun, but like what I was thinking is the cliche of they're gonna be taken out like one by one until there's yeah. a few or one left. You know, I think we could they could stay in the group and then stay as a group, like because that's kind of a subversion. But also, we set up the fact that these robots they they're like Wally type robots. They're not super dangerous. But once they go into a certain, <gasps> they have blue lights. But once it's a red light, that's when it's bad. Which I know is a cliche that's been done over well, and over again. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking like on the surface or whatever. Yeah. We have like these humanoid like, like yeah. almost Terminator like robots like, that are like, like people and they're yeah like they're droids civilized from and Star they Wars. follow these rules. Yeah, from the government. But whatever is down here is like yeah. old and it's rogue and it just like murders like everything. Jurassic Park. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Just like I like that. how we're just bringing in a bunch of different films because I think that's the best way to get the feeling of a film that you want to make. So this is kind of like a Star Wars dy- dystopia with right. alien-esque suspense and Jurassic Park-like creatures. And yeah. we set up the sounds that they make, and then whenever you hear that, you know that stuff is going to go down. And they have to yeah. run through these things and i feel like we could be inventive with well when you mentioned that star wars thing i was like well we don't have to work with the basic horror stuff of like oh they got a gun oh they got a flashlight like yeah no we could be like no in this universe there's this ridiculous thing you know (laughs) yeah and we could play around with that even though they're just stuck in some tunnel they can have some weird or crazy technology you know they could try to use to fight it or something like that i don't know Mm -hmm. and because they are a resistance going against the government and these robots supposedly they know what to do so yeah i think this is a really cool idea the red light coming to theaters near you never the poster is just just looking down the tunnel with just the faint red light in the uh, at the end oh that's beautiful (laughs) that's really clever I mean, it's predictable, but it's it, predictable, it sounds but it's really also, fun. I really want to see this movie now. Let's make it right now. Let's let's. All right. Just, yeah, I'll be I'll be there in twenty five hours. We, we all just, know how well you know amateur horror films do as far as being <laughs> scary. They're so great. It's not like you know high production is almost always necessary to make something terrifying. Yeah, except except I feel as though this movie could be really good if done really well with a high budget. If you make oh, the yeah. robots brilliant and i think the main thing that will really drive this film is the editing the soundtrack and this just the sound design cgi would also be great my so, opinion is we have an on-set animatronic we aren't yeah. cg in this thing we're gonna have an <laughs> actual terrifying robot that's gonna walk down these these tunnels would, or whatever it would or something make like that the actor's jobs significantly easier so i mean <laughs> 
Sure, let's do that. <laughs> or, but really, the sounds that it makes is yeah. <laughs> not not a gritty. <laughs> I should do the sound design with my mouth. Just <laughs> all the sounds. Okay. I think we have a solid concept. I like this. We, Filmmakers we out there. Well. The red light, use it. We haven't copyrighted it yet, so. Even though we, we just discussed it, so it's technically our intellectual property. Hey, you, you know what? If you make that film, anybody out there, make it good or I'm call, I'm delete it from the existence. surface right now. What's that? You can't you can't patent amateur movie ideas? That's Aww. for inventions. Oh Narts. I'm sorry. <laughs> Every time. Segment four. This is a new segment called Today's oh. Holidays. And we look at the holidays that will be happening on the day oh, that this yeah. comes out. This will be on Wednesday, February fourteenth, twenty eighteen, which obviously there there's an obvious holiday on this. Very special um, day. Yeah, so National Ferris Wheel Day. That's the obvious one. Um, and then I found some a few obscure ones, too. Uh, we'll go through those. So basically, as we all know, National Ferris Wheel Day is basically you celebrate Ferris wheels. And so if you're going to go on a Ferris wheel today, perfect. Um, go but to your local problem, pier. I don't carnival. know. I, I'm seeing a problem where 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 I live. Mm -hmm. It's It's winter. I mean... You better be living like I don't know in the, the the lower hemisphere or something if you're expecting to ride Ferris wheels on Ferris wheel day, cause well I mean if you can't ride one just appreciate them just just look up some pictures be like that's look a up some nice pictures Ferris wheel. you know watch Ferris Bueller's Day Off it's essentially the same thing more like Ferris Wheeler's Day Off <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna address the elephant in the room. Okay, Everyone yeah. knows you celebrate February fourteenth for National Organ Donor Day. Uh, yes, I, that I mean, you see symbolism all over. You, mm -hmm. If you're thinking about donating organs, February fourteenth that's that's the day to do it. Yeah, um, I might be donating a kidney this year. Um, nice or two, depends. But we'll see. At least seven. <laughs> I celebrate this every year, and. If you are not an organ owner when you sign up for your driver's license or whatever, you should uh, get on that. Yeah, if you die, somebody out there is going to want those those yeah. juicy little bits off your body. Mm -hmm. And what are you going to do with them when you're dead? Yeah, exactly. Literally nothing. You could save someone's life. So reconsider if you decided not to become an organ donor. That's an objectively good thing to do. Objectively uh, <laughs> good thing. <laughs> uh, some common hashtags for National Organ Donor Day is hashtag National Organ Donor Day, hashtag Organ Donor Day, hashtag National Donor Day, and hashtag Donor Day. Mwah. Just roll mm, right beautiful. off the tongue. I all use of those them do. all week so, leading up to it. So. Go, go ahead. Celebrate National Organ Donor Day with us. <laughs> Segment five. It's Plati of Andorus, episode three. Oh, boy. So uh, for those who are not in the know of what Platea Vandoris is. I wrote a series of stories that lasted five episodes because I got a typewriter one summer, and I wrote them when I was, like, in middle school before I had actually taken actual good writing classes. So these are horribly written, horribly formatted. If you missed the last two episodes, I will leave the links in the show notes description. You can go listen to me read them. I'm going to read episode three now. So Can you give us a brief summary of what happened in the other two episodes? Well, um, <laughs> no. Just listen to them. <laughs> if you want, you can read them. I, I, put, I have an album on exactly. Imger, 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 Imger. I don't remember. And I'll read this quote for quote. If you want to read along, do that. It'll make your life a lot easier. And you can sympathize with me. No, sorry. You can empathize with me more because it's very difficult to read. This one is actually fairly properly formatted. It's all left aligned, so that's good. It's not, hey. like, centered, which was Thanks. stupid of me to do. Anyway. <clears throat> the Adventures of Platea Vendoris. Episode 3. The Mysterious Thing in the Sky. Written by Noah Last Name. So, I'm not going to be all, like, previously on Platea Vendoris. Instead, I'm just going to cut to the chase. And then, after the reporter went missing, nothing really, quote-unquote, bad happened... Because nobody really cared about him. And nobody at the party noticed until 
Somebody wanted their picture taken. I'd like to note that there is spelled T H E R E. Uh, and then they knew that something was up. So they got Platea of Andorus, and he was trying to find him, but he couldn't. Until. A bird! A plane! No! It's a UFO! And all the people were like, equal sign zero. What? <laughs> Exclamation mark. Equal sign zero. Again, using those emoticons in the actual literature. Beautiful. So Platea of Andorus found that chasm again, the one with the giant trampoline in it, and then oh, yeah. jumped into it, and when he did, he found out that they took the giant trampoline out of the chasm. But don't worry, there were, was a branch on the way down the chasm and got it. And it Always. Had a, and it, Always and it had lots of bounce down. to it. So when he let go of it, he went shooting up and out of the chasm, and he was still going after the UFO. And then he was thinking to himself, running is taking way too long, so I'll just take out my pocket jetpack trademark. Something oh my everyone gosh. thinks about. I added trademark to this. I had I had pocket jetpack TM. Oh boy. What? I don't even I didn't even know what trademarking was. Oh, that's funny. Okay, never mind. Um I also spelt running way wrong. Okay. And so, he took it out and he flew to the UFO, but they were expecting him. And then in parentheses, and you're wondering how they knew about Plantea of Andorus. Well, they're aliens. They invented TV. Thanks for fixing that plot hole for me real quick. <laughs> they invented TV. <laughs> that's, that's the reason that they have heard of Plantea of Andorus. So because much. they invented TV. So when he got up to the UFO, they had set up a trap for Plantea of Andorus. And we got, when he got trapped... Wait. And when he got trapped, then the guy from Star Wars was all like... It was a trap. I didn't know his name. General Akbar. Oh, gosh. No. Admiral Akbar. I didn't even capitalize Star Wars. Should have put Star Wars trademark. Um, and then he saw the reporter across the room also trapped. And then he saw the aliens come out of the, their rooms. And they were telling him his plan. And it was very, very, very boring. So he oh. just ignored them. So when the aliens were done explaining their useless plan to Platea of Andorus, he just punched the cage, and he got out. Then he beat up all of the aliens and saved the oh. reporter, and then jumped out of the flying saucer. They're calling it a flying saucer because it's n not identified anymore. Unidentified. <laughs> wow, I was clever. So as they were falling through the air, they were thinking, quote, how in the world are we going to get down safely because the aliens took my pocket jetpack? I didn't put the trademark on there that time. <clears throat> but then he remembered about the giant bouncy castle that they put up for the party. <laughs> no. <laughs> so he tried to get over there so we could land on it, and he missed it. <gasps> oh, gosh, he missed it. <gasps> but don't worry, he's Platea of Andorus, so he was safe because he landed on the reporter. But, wow. But, dot, 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 the reporter was in the hospital. But it's a good thing that he ended up in the hospital because he's got, he got to see people from his family that had, he hadn't seen for a while. Oh, that's so that's great. why it was a good thing. That's really cute. And so Platea of Andorus went home. And all of a sudden, boom! <gasps> there was a giant explosion at the bank while he huh. was on his way home. And then in parentheses, just because nothing quote-unquote normal seems to happen in these stories. So what he did was dot, dot, dot. Well, I guess you'll find out in the next episode of no. The Adventures of Platea Vandoris. Wow. That, what a ride. What a ride. I think I skipped a line somewhere midway the story, but I think it's fine. There's, there's action. There's suspense. There's Platea Vandoris. There's, there's pocket jetpack trademark. Getting out, getting out of the chasm. <laughs> I just like how the fact that they removed it. It's like, oh, we just removed the giant trampoline that was there. I like the absolute ignorance of the writer. Because it was complete ignorance as to how writing works and how setup works. But I, I, I like how most sentences are, this thing happened, but it's okay. It's fine. Whatever. This is why it happens. And that's why it's fine. And the aliens invented TV, obviously.
that was today's episode. Uh, Tendo, please take us out. There he is. It's it's your beautiful child. Your your first your first living thing you've ever you you made a baby. You had it. You had a kid. Okay, you had a kid. That's the idea. Got it. It's it's such a tender moment. Sitting there, you're looking at him. It's a he. We're pretty sure at this point. Um, and whatever I don't know. You're you ask your significant other. You're like, what should we name him? And they smile at you the sweetest smile and grab a small piece of paper crumpled in their pocket and they they unfold it and they say i i would have nothing else but have him be named jatazapam 62 (laughs) underscore xx three 62 underscore xx Also, now I'm really tempted to, like, put a heart on the little tiny, like, the picture for the episode with the episode number on it. (laughs) Please do. (laughs) It would just be, it would be so perfect. Or, and then call the episode a very special holiday. (laughs)